Alright. Hello? Right. Oh, this is your good side. <laughs> <laughs> we got that on tape. <sighs> yeah, you might want to move this leg. I don't know if that's. Is that even comfortable for you? Mm -hmm. Alright. What's up, everybody? <laughs> do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> What did I tell you about not ruining the video like last time? <laughs> I love that laugh, by the way. What's good, everybody? Sultan of Strangles here. Instagram's starting to bore me a little bit. A lot of you got asked for YouTube videos, and it's tough to make. You're doing all the opposite things I asked you to. But anyway. I want to do some more long form videos because it's ridiculous that Instagram is a, a one minute, you know, max. So I'm just literally becoming a zombie on there. I'm always thinking of how can I get this point across in one minute? How can I get this caption across in a short caption? And I'm just like, you know what, man? Fuck it. Let's just do YouTube. I've always wanted to do YouTube. And many of you have been asking me who this strange woman is in all my stories. Well, I'd like you to, I'd like to introduce you to my lady, my queen, <laughs> my baby, Maria. Today, we're gonna talk about a very important topic about relationships. What about relationships? Don't do it. <laughs> Go. Anyway. So, there's going to be days, especially most days with me and Maria, are action-packed and wild, and we have a lot of fun, right? Yes. <laughs> but some days today, you know, your partner may be in a very pissy, moody... Maybe life. some people didn't have partners who were dicks. <laughs> 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 Anyway, some days you're gonna have days where you're both tired, you both had a long week, and you can't fucking go ax throwing, all right? I feel like when people go out on dates these days, it's uh -huh. like, we gotta go ax throwing. All right, we went ax throwing, now we gotta go go-karting. Uh, all right, now we gotta go rock climbing. Now we gotta go zip lining. Now we get, and then like when they run out of these stupid things to do, they're like, oh wait, I don't even fucking like this person and they break up. So we're going to talk about what causes the longevity in a relationship. And in my opinion, I think to find out if you're compatible with someone, go on a couple cool dates, go out, have fun, go hike, go axe throwing, go do a drink and paint night. But if you can't be entertained with them in a room where there's nothing else and it's just you two, then literally, this man got no furniture. <laughs> there ain't no paintings on these walls. I'm a minimalist. She don't like that. Her house is full of plants everywhere. Like fucking, literally, you can't move because there's plants. I don't like plants. I'm a minimalist. I got minimal furniture. <laughs> And that makes me happy, right? <laughs> that makes me happy. But anyway, you could put us in a room and we'll just be laughing and having a good time the whole time. But there's some days like today, right? She's a little better now because she got some food in her. She got some fruits in her, right? <laughs> but there's gonna be days where you're both tired and you just have to learn to live, have a normal life with each other. And I feel like that's why a lot of relationships don't succeed because they're always doing these stupid, silly events. And after, when those are done, you don't know what else to do. So my advice is, number one, go on a couple of cool dates, but have some quality time where you're not really doing anything else. See if you like each other. We figured it out that we did because we just love hanging out with each other. Number two, not every day has to be some spectacular fucking day. Some days, 
I'm gonna do my work, she's gonna do her work, we're gonna be in the same room, we're gonna enjoy each other's company. What you got to say? Uh, I wasn't expecting to be put on the spot like that. I think it's important to learn each other's love languages though, because my love language is quality time. So for me, it's important that we put the phones away, put the TVs away, and just have this quality time. So that when you are doing your own thing, and I'm doing my own thing, it doesn't bother me because my cup has been filled because we had that quality time. And I think it's so important to learn your partner's love languages, what is the best way that they feel loved so that you can pour into that cup. So when you guys do have that friction, it's it's all right. You can kind of navigate around it because you'll know how to... I wasn't prepared for this. No, that was a great answer. I and wasn't I, prepared for this. It's all right. <laughs> that was a really good answer. Yeah. I'm going to add on to that. She said her love language is quality time. I'm going to disagree. Can we have multiple love languages? Yeah. Acts of service is one of hers. And one, Do you think so? 100%. One thing that I loved about her is that right off the bat, she showed me like, um, I'm here, like um, I got your back, like I'm your ride or die, like very early in the relationship. Oh. Cooking for me when I didn't ask you to, coming to my gym, cleaning the whole gym when I didn't ask you to, cleaning my room when I didn't ask you to, buying me freaking stuff like the water jug and stuff, like that really touched me. To the point where I'm like, now I want to do nice things for her. And it, and it made me want to do nice things. And it made me realize that one of my love languages is acts of service. Um, and So you going to finish that laundry? You going to finish that laundry tonight? <laughs> Listen. I did both of our laundry. All right? I'm doing my laundry. So I said, you know what? Let me just do yours too. And she's taking it as like, <laughs> I'm the house husband. She's been calling me that he's lately. Cooking, he's like, cooking bok choy for us oh now. Man, real quick, pause to the camera while I go stir the bok choy. He talking about the love languages. What's going on guys? This is Maria here to uncover all of the secrets of the Sultan. <laughs> so in front of the screen, he likes to pretend to be this big, tough, bad guy but he likes to be small spoon yo what did i tell you about this video I <laughs> you, <laughs> you can edit this part out <laughs> he likes kisses on the forehead um he likes when i rub his tummy when it hurts <laughs> that's just not true come on don't be spreading lies listen listen i think it's yeah, listen 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 i'll admit I like being small spoon. <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> I, I bet like... you every single person, every man will admit to being, to enjoying small spoon. Uh, I don't know about that, but I'll admit it. I like being small spoon. I do like kisses on the forehead, but <laughs> I, I've i never asked you to rub my tummy. <laughs> okay, that one was that. an exaggeration. <laughs> Straight up making shit up tonight. <laughs> So for you, 100% acts of service. That was that was one of the main things about you that I'm like, all right, this girl's serious. This girl's serious. I'm gonna take. I don't play. <laughs> um, what are my love languages? Is touch a love language? Yeah, physical touch. Physical touch is a love language for me. That's why he loves rolling with the guys in jujitsu so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he goes to all the open mats. <laughs> That's why he tells people. That's why he tells guys all the time to come to open mat. That's why he markets so heavily because physical touch is his love language. I think words of affirmation is a love language of yours. Like I think that's a very important for you. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. When I <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, she was. Oh, by the way, last day ever at her current job that she left, 
She started a new job last week, so this week she was working two jobs. Crazy schedule. Why she was so tired today? Technically three. <sighs> three, three jobs. Um, so, um, you know, at first she was like, I don't like this job. I'm like, you keep talking about this car dealership that you worked at where you were freaking doing so good. Why not go back to that? Anxiety, this, that. I'm like, yo, just apply. And I forced her to apply. And we had to a bunch of other obstacles that I'm not going to get into. But I was pushing her the whole time. And, you know, every, every time she talks about the job, I'm like, yeah, you know, it was awesome that I helped you get that. So kind of busting her balls. So she's saying I need words of affirmation. Whenever he cooks, he's like, the fact that you're not complimenting, complimenting this dish is actually kind of pissing me off. <laughs> Tell me how this is the most delicious thing you've ever eaten. Tell me that it is better than the restaurants. He demands that I say these things to feed his own <laughs> ego. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, normal people are just like, oh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, bye. But he sits there and he watches me eat. He watches my reactions with every bite. All right, and listen. expects... A, in an, a, a compliment of how delicious it is after every bite. Listen, all y'all know, right? The woman's supposed to cook, right? The man's not supposed to cook. So listen, when I cook, you know, the first two times. Get you a man who can do both. <laughs> when I cook, the first like two or three times, she's like, baby, this is amazing. I love this. No one's ever done this for me. I've always wanted this done for me. And I felt great. I felt great about that, right? But then, you know, the fourth and fifth time I did it, you kind of didn't act the same way. So, you know, maybe be appreciative. Like <laughs> maybe season your chicken better. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Give me this dry ass chicken. That shit almost, that shit was getting stuck in the top of my tooth. <laughs> he uh, said he put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 400 degrees. Isn't that normal for no, chicken? No, that's dry as chicken. No, the chicken was really good. All right, listen, I like my steak rare, but I like my chicken well done. I like it crispy. She doesn't like <laughs> it crispy. That's so was not crispy. Right. It was a Sahara Desert. But the effort was. Yeah, A for effort. I thought we were saying that day. You were telling me how to dry the chicken. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, I gotta go start. Talk about words of affirmation, touch. What's my other love language? I think those are. What are the other love languages? It's physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service. Quality time. Why am I forgetting the last one? Physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and gift giving. Yay. That's not our. That's not us at all. I that, didn't. It, I didn't just get you the blow dryer. Yeah, and, and I love that you do. I love that you do, the, the but if you didn't, the, I would be okay too. The facial, the <laughs> manicure, the manicure. That's such a lie. He's never the, done any of the that. The cash here and there. <laughs> what you talking about, girl? Tell you want to see my toes? They're crusty <laughs> no, right now. There's no showing, pedicure. Don't be showing nobody your toes, but I did pay for your pedicure. So don't lie about that. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's Gift giving. I don't think I've ever really gotten you a gift because it's not really my language. It's not my love language. You tend your love language tends to be what you do for others or what you need. You tend to do that for others as your love language. No, so I, mean, I love gifts. Mm -hmm. I write who doesn't love to receive gifts, but it's not a very. It's not like a. I don't feel. I don't feel unloved if you don't give me gifts. If you didn't give me. Gifts, I would be fine. But if you didn't give me quality time, this then this Where wouldn't work. <laughs> Baby, so. <laughs> oh, no! The mangoes! 
what's up? <laughs> this video is coming up. Oh, <laughs> this is sloppy. <laughs> this is sloppy <laughs> as he eats them off the floor. Hey, give me a cup. But it's still sandwiches. That's a carpet, too. It's like he, he's eating it off of carpet, so you know it's like kind of fuzz on it. <laughs> Gift giving. I do a lot of that for you, right? Um, you probably up that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. I, there's always room for improvement. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so we've gone over love languages. We've gone over compatibility. We've gone over. But what do you think makes you? What do you think makes someone compatible with a partner? Uh, core values. By the way, I won't. This is a story for another time. But we both found each other when we were both looking for something serious. I was looking for something serious. She was looking for something serious. And we happened to meet each other at the right place at the right time. Can you just move your leg more? It was more comfortable the other way. We met each other at the right place at the right time. And the first date was us kind of feeling each other out. But the second date, what did I do? I literally sat you down across the kitchen table. And I'm like, this is what I'm looking for. These are my boundaries. These are what I expect from the person I'm dating, right? So I'm old, so I ain't trying to like, because I've met people before where I'm looking for something serious, but then they only want to meet up every three weeks. So I, my last ex, I dumped her. I'm like, listen, this ain't going to work. Peace. So I told her, I need you to be in my life. So see each other, see each other multiple times a week because we need to know. If she wants to see me like every day. Okay. Just that in there. Not every day, but multiple times a week. I'm, Six I'm not, days a week. I'm not trying to get into a serious relationship with someone that I'm seeing once a week or once every other week. It's not, that's just not what I'm looking for at this stage of my life. Number two, I'm really into fitness. Are you into fitness? You don't have to be into jujitsu. I'm into jujitsu. You don't have to be into jujitsu, but... You do have to be into fitness. So when I tell you I'm going to the gym, they could hear you. <laughs> no, you that can't. That wasn't that, that wasn't no, you that can't low. Hear that. that wasn't that low. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm like, I'm into fitness. Are you into fitness? Yes. If I have to stay at the gym for an extra hour, are you gonna get are you gonna complain? I've had that problem in the past where like just skip the gym for me. Just don't go to training for me. And with her, it's never that. It's actually kind of the opposite a little bit because she'll spend like four hours at the gym and uh, I'm like, yo, are you done yet? Nah, nah, I got like another hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so fitness is really important to me. Hard work is very important to me. Um, I'm not the most spiritual person, but I need a little spirituality. And I think that was an issue you ran into before, right? Yes. You said your exes were not spiritual, really, and that bothered you. Mm -hmm. And I remember the like first... Like, no kind of faith. No faith in anything. Yeah, so, like, the first time she saw me pray, so she's, I don't know, if she, I wouldn't call it Christian, I guess just spiritual. I was raised Catholic. Raised Catholic. I'm Muslim. So the first time she saw me praying, and you know how Muslims pray, you know, um, got, I could tell she was a little freaked out. No, I wasn't. You weren't freaked out? No. Right. But she told me she liked the fact that I prayed, and that was cool. Um, what are the other core values? Love We're both extremely affectionate. I think just playfulness is like a core value of mine. Mm -hmm. I play too damn much. And I, 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 I can't be with a partner who doesn't value that mm -hmm. or, or, at least, or at least tolerate it. But he plays a lot too, so it works out. What's funny he is... He tolerates it a lot. What's funny is that in her past relationships, her exes kind of didn't like that she was so playful. 
but with us, I kind of get on her nerves sometimes because I'm too playful. Like, I'll go into character sometimes, and I'll stay in character for He'll just do these retarded, <laughs> ghetto characters in his kitchen. It's always in this one spot in his kitchen. I'm right now, though, yo. No, no, Rodney. Rodney, whatever. And I'm just like, yo, can you just pass me the pepper? Like, just pass me the pepper. Can you just... And he'll just stay in character for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> like... I don't really smoke weed, but there was a period of time where I was hitting like one or two hits before bed just to go to bed. And she hasn't smoked weed in like a month now. But when she was smoking weed, you know, I'm like, I got some weed at my house. <laughs> you got that sticky. I got, I got that sticky. So <laughs> we get in my kitchen and I just stay in character for like two hours pretending to be Rodney, a drug dealer. <laughs> that, that, that I got that sticky. And I could tell. It was she... like three month old weed, by the way, <laughs> in this water bottle made bong with dirty water. <laughs> he was trying to make it seem like it was the best weed. <laughs> but anyway, it got to the point where she's like, all right, bro, enough is enough. And I kept staying in character. So I'm playful to the point where it bothers her sometimes. Um, affectionate. I'm a very affectionate person. I need someone who's very affectionate. I've been in relationships before where they just didn't like to snuggle. And I thought that was normal. I no, that's just not part of the relationship. I. Right? But then as I got older, I'm like, nah. Like, after a long week of fucking having to throw people on their heads all day and getting thrown all day, I'm trying to come home to get some snuggling. You know what I'm saying? And she loves to snuggle, like hours. So that's huge. Um, just Sultan of snuggles. <laughs> Uh, what are some other core values? Those, I think, are the main ones. Would you say we're both extroverts? Yes. But I'm also very introverted. Yeah, you too. need your time alone. I need my time alone. But at the end of the day, me and her are very outspoken people. We That's love... why he was talking to that bitch in the laundromat. That's, that's just someone I say hi to every now and then, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, there's nothing going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Men will talk to bitches all over the place, but just be like, nah, just because I'm an extrovert. It's just my personality. <laughs> it ain't nothing. <laughs> but yeah, like her new job, that's a job for an extrovert. Talking to people, making deals, taking phone calls. I'm a jujitsu coach. I was an accountant for many years. I'm still an accountant. I'm an extrovert. I love people. I love talking to people. I get energy from people. I need my alone time. She needs her alone time. We're both very outspoken. And having that in common with her is a lot of fun because we can make videos like these for you guys. This video was supposed to be five minutes, but we ended up having a lot of fun making it, right? So before you tune out, go follow me at K-O-O-L-R-A-K. Make sure to follow my gym at Immortals Jiu Jitsu, my podcast at Rambling with Rack, and check out her Instagram too, at Mama on a Mission. Any other plugs? No. Mm. Land Rover Paramus if you need a new whip. That's right. All right. Peace out. Twenty three.